we're asked here to simplify a trigonometric expression into a single trig function with no fractions. Okay, so here's, I'll talk a little bit about the strategy that we're going to do here. Uh, number one, I want you to change all trig expressions. So change all functions to sines and cosines. And you can't just rewrite them, like turn your secant into sine, right? It doesn't quite work like that. What I mean is using the reciprocal or quotient identities. Okay, those qu reciprocal or quotient identities tell you how to turn secant into sines and cosines. And once you do that, then um, we're going to simplify a little bit. And number three, look for a Pythagorean identity. And that Pythagorean identity will usually simplify things some more. And eventually, you'll be able to get this to a single function. So as an example, I'm not going to do your work for you in this one because there's... Uh, that's going to take all the fun out of it, right? Let's try something else. Let's do, um, let's do cotangent. I'm just going to say x. Cotangent of x divided by cosecant of x minus sine of x. Okay, cotangent on top, cosecant minus sine on bottom. And we're going to follow these same steps. So on top, what I have is cosine x divided by sine x, all divided by, now cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, that's my reciprocal identity. 1 over sine minus sine of x. So we're dealing with a compound fraction here. And if you remember the way we deal with compound fractions, you want to multiply by a crazy one to clear these denominators. Okay, I've got some denominators that need clearing here. And I'm looking especially at that right there and this right here. Okay, the denominators within the fraction. So I'm going to multiply by, now I'm not liking that pink choice. It's just clashing. So let's do, uh, I don't know, purple. Okay, I'm going to multiply by sine over sine. Okay, sine x over sine x, and that should clear all my denominators nicely. If you take a look at the top one first, whoa, hold on. Top one, sine x times this fraction is going to give you cos times sine over sine. The sines cancel out. You get, oh, sloppy, you get um, cosine. And that's all you have left on top after the bottoms cancel out. Now, on the bottom portion, we're going to multiply sine times 1 over sine and also by sine itself. So sine times 1 over sine is just 1. And then sine times sine is going to be sine squared. So here's the result of that multiplication. I get cosine divided by 1 minus sine squared. Now, if you remember your Pythagorean identity, what is something useful I could say about sine squared? Well, the Pythagorean identity says sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, regardless of the angle. And if I just rearrange that a little bit, I can see that cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. Okay, so let's turn 1 minus sine squared into cosine squared. We get cosine of x on top, that hasn't changed, divided by cosine squared of x on bottom. Well, now we cancel some things out, and we just get 1 on top with a single factor of cosine on bottom. You might think that's about as far as we can go. But remember what it said. It said with no fractions. So I need one more step. I need to remember that according to the reciprocal identity, this is equal to secant of x. Okay, and that would be my final answer. It's a single trig function with no fractions.